I'm Darren Grimes and this is GB News. I'm delighted to be joined at our conference by the wonderful Emma Webb of the Common Sense Society. Emma, we could certainly do with some more common sense in Britain, couldn't we? We certainly could. Is this common the Sense Society does what it says on the tin. Absolutely. <laughs> is this the conference to bring that about, do you think? Well, I think that common sense needs to be brought about through general community effort. I don't think that any single... Um, event can foster that though I do think that um, initiatives like this and all of the, all sorts of different things that are currently um, blossoming at the moment we're seeing all sorts of organizations being created all sorts of activity starting to flourish I do think that that does start to um, s sort of push society uh, in the right direction of um, fostering a more sensible approach to our highly ideological culture now, speaking of that ideology, one issue we've been talking about a lot here is the idea of shared values. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a real argument that mass migration, and dare I say illegal migration as well, has brought about quite a few people in isolated communities who do not share our views and values. I think that's really been mm -hmm. brought into the nation's focus during the aftermath of the October 7 massacre in Israel completely we've seen this playing out on our streets for the last three weeks now it's central london on a saturday is almost a, a no-go zone because these protests are, um, are so vast and sheer number of people who have been out in our streets um, not only um, supporting hamas but also celebrating um, the massacre of jews and um, some colleagues of mine have been you know, working on um, looking in, into some of this stuff and the crimes uh, that Hamas have committed against um, Israeli civilians and particularly children is absolutely heartbreaking. And the fact that there are people who have been going out into our streets and celebrating that and being jubilant about that. I think we've seen, you know, in 2015, um, David Cameron and actually the hero of the left, Angela Merkel, um, who encouraged so many people to come into Europe. Um, they admitted themselves that multiculturalism had failed and um, Suella Braverman now all these years later repeating that but we're seeing now on our streets that we really do have a crisis of um, social um, social cohesion but also just in, in the broadest terms of our shared values as a society that there are some people um, who see what happened at the hands of those Hamas terrorists in Israel and think that that is cause for celebration. So I, I, I think it will be, and I hope that it will be, a wake-up call for a lot of people um, to recognize what is at stake um, when it comes to our national values, that we cannot afford this laissez-faire attitude um, where we just simply withdraw from the moral world. Um, we need to foster shared values within our communities to try and build um, a sort of civilized environment that we all want to live in, in which liberty um, can really truly flourish, in which we can all be free. And I think that was um, the point of Miriam Cates's um, speech that she gave earlier today, that um, there are, there are cer certain a certain groundwork has to be laid in order for us to live in a free society. Do you worry that places like London are just totally, completely lost now? It feels like it at times, doesn't it? I, I, it's, it's, it's difficult not to be extremely pessimistic under the circumstances, and I have to confess that over the last three weeks, particularly seeing how many people are not only sort of emboldened to be brazenly anti-Semitic, but how many people have been sort of acquiescent in the face of that. Um, and frankly, to see how um, supine our police force has become. The fact that we have um, the police um, putting out, almost putting out excuses, yes. um, saying that in a con in, in, somebody shouting jihad in the streets, that in, that co in the context of um, people holding banners, talking about Muslim armies, um, at an event organized by an, 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 a self-professed Islamist organization, that they would interpret that as meaning spiritual um, internal jihad is so absurd that they say that they're being advised by their specialists and their experts. And you have to ask who these experts actually are. So I'm, I'm very concerned about law and order in our capital. Um, I'm concerned that things could spiral in a pretty nasty way if the police continue to behave um, in the way that they have and I think again like I said I think a lot of people will be looking at this um, and this will be a wake-up call a recognition that like you you ask you know has 
has London been lost? I'm uh, in 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 every sense. I'm a Londoner. You know, I I grew up on the periphery of the of the city, but my family on my dad's side, East London, is all the way back. This is my home. Um, I don't want to leave. But I feel, as many others are feeling, that London isn't really a safe place anymore. Um, and I'm heartbroken to see what our city is becoming. Now, a lot of people have made the case that actually what needs to happen in Britain is a retelling of our story, mm -hmm. where actually younger generations mm -hmm. today simply aren't being told mm -hmm. the story of this nation and what makes yeah. us unique in the world. Do you think that's a deliberate act? Do you think actually the, the denial of that story, the denial of what Britain is and, and who she's been on, on the world stage for mm -hmm. goodness only knows how long, what previous generations have sacrificed in order for it to be what mm -hmm. it is today, so people are free yeah. to do horrendous things outside the cenotaph, which mm -hmm. I think are disgraceful. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem that actually it suits some people to not tell our national story so actually they can concoct a new one that says we're a horrible, bigoted, you know, swivel-eyed, mm -hmm. racist loon fest. Well, quite. I, there, is, there, are no, there are no activists who are advocating for not telling our story. They're just advocating for telling a story about our country that is of pure repudiation. Mm. It's purely negative. It views us as, as participating in a kind of original sin. It's, it's what Pascal Bruckner referred to as the tyranny of guilt. So this story has been spun now for many, many decades, and it's now bearing some pretty ugly fruit, I think. So we have been telling a national story that is unrelentingly negative, that makes young people feel that they must not only hate their country and their culture, but also hate themselves. They feel that they need to look for something else to find themselves in some kind of off-the-shelf um, sort of cookie-cutter um, identity. Um, and I think that s stories and narratives are important. Stories are... a. a almost primal part of who we are as human beings and that's actually been one of the um, main themes of this conference is that it's, it's very much about storytelling um, and who we, who we are and how we talk about ourselves um, and I think it's important that a culture is, and a country of people is able to speak about themselves in positive terms to, to try to replace this culture of repudiation that I think even you, you and I, Darren, are the same age. I think even as we were growing up, at least my experience of the education system was being really inculcated with this negativity about who we are as a country. And I think younger people, those who are even younger than us, um, they are really bearing the brunt of a much, much more negative education. Um, and that's not to say that we should have um, uh, a triumphalist um, history that is, is inaccurate, which I actually think is the problem with this ideological retelling um, of our nation's history, because that is inaccurate. It is so ideological that it takes us away from the truth. And um, actually, we were at the, the Battle of Ideas was, um, as this weekend, just before this conference. Um, and that was one of the, the discussions that um, kept emerging. And actually, the Common Sense Society had a panel there on me whether museums can survive um, the culture wars. And one of the questions that someone raised was about neutrality. And um, my argument would be actually that ideology is not even-handed. And what we, need to, what we need to be doing is being truthful about our history. We should, of course, we should teach people about the negative aspects of our history, but we have to be realistic and even-handed that there, are, there is nuance in history, that history is always within some kind of tension. There is good and there is bad. As Solzhenitsyn said that the, um, the line between good and evil runs through the heart of every individual. Um, so I think it's, it's about um, escaping this ideological trap that has been gradually knitting itself um, over many decades. And it's the adhesive that binds us together, isn't it? A national story, a national mm. narrative. And that's what feels missing mm. to me. That whole picture of, you know, the, the kind of Britain that my grandfather mm. went out to North, uh, well, to, the, to fight North Korea, essentially, mm -hmm. to fight communism. It was the only time he went abroad, Emma, right? Isn't that extraordinary? But would, I don't look at Britain today and assume that someone would be willing to actually say the values that this country represents are worth 
defending elsewhere as well. I just don't mm. think that would happen. So I find that deeply troubling. It's a difference between a culture of repudiation and a culture of love. And I think the way in which it's sort of almost portrayed as if ha loving your culture is, is a naughty act, that patriotism is something that's dangerous, when in fact it's not only something perfectly natural, it's also something that's virtuous. Um, and I think our grandparents' generation, I know that Darren, you and I probably identify more with our grandparents' Absolutely. generation than our own, they really felt that very, very deeply. Um, and they, they understood that and they did have, and partly because of, it, because of their experiences through the war, they did have that sense of being sort of bound together by a shared story. Whereas I think partly because of mass migration, the disintegration of the social fabric, we have seen in that rupture of the social fabric that sort of all sorts of different stories. And I think what we're, what we're trying to do now in terms of um, a practical endeavor and something that I think we do have to do as a, as a nation is to have a shared story between all of us, to bind us together, to bind us together with shared values. And those values, importantly, that keep us free. Because what we're seeing now is that ideas have consequences. Um, and there are cultures that do have bad ideas, that do have um, values that don't align with those values that facilitate the flourishing of freedom and so on. Um, and so there is actually something that really is at stake if we withdraw from trying to, and I think it's an organic process, it's not something that can be top down. This is something that communities have to do together in a shared endeavor to, um, to re-knit the social fabric um, in a way that creates a, a, a communities and a society that we all want to live in. Now Emma, just finally, I'm wondering what you would like the key takeaway to be were you able to march into number 10 Downing Street, perhaps? What would the key takeaway from this conference be that you wish policymakers, mm. our lawmakers, would actually look at and enact? That is a question that I think is actually too difficult to answer. Yeah. You might have to get me back on at the end Absolutely. of the conference. Because at the moment, I am observing what every, not only what the speakers are saying, but what everybody is also um, saying here in the discussions between talks as well. So ask me when the conference I'll is over and I'll, maybe well, I'll have I'll an answer. I'll hold you to that promise. <laughs> I mean, there are so many issues being debated here, you know, net zero, we're talking mm. about the environment, we're talking about that mm. shared national identity that we've just been discussing, but also just being responsible mm. and rational actors. So I actually think that what is, um, what is at the heart of this is not something necessarily for government policy. The, the, this conference is called the Alliance for Responsible Citizenship. Yes. It's actually about what we can do as citizens. Um, and so, as I say, I think that these sorts of things can only be solved culturally. They can be they can be solved bottom up. I don't think that it's something that could be solved by the government, or necessarily maybe even should be solved by the government, um, even if there was a political will to do so. I don't think there is political will. Um, I think some things are suitable for government to get involved in, and other things aren't. But there are certain certainly things that the government can do that do make a difference. So for example, getting control of our borders would go a long way um, yes. to not having such a disruptive situation with mass migration in some of our communities that are the hardest hit by that. Lawlessness, there are a whole host of things, right, that could mm. be sorted out at the drop of a hat and they just aren't. One thing I would say is the police force needs to get its act together. Yeah, absolutely. And that is extremely important and that isn't anything necessarily to do with anything that we're discussing at this conference. But I do think that you don't have law and order if um, the law isn't actually being enforced by the police. And what we do see is the police um, who are getting themselves involved in things that they shouldn't be, things like policing people's tweets, um, arresting people for thoughts, um, as they have done with um, with women praying, a woman praying silently in her own head, um, whilst also allowing people to um, incite violence in the street and support terrorist organisations without any implications. I think that that sends the wrong message and it could very easily spiral out of control. So there are very fundamental things um, that, that need to happen in order to keep society free and one of them is that the law is actually enforced. Yeah, I mean in my head, you know, I actually sympathise with the police where they're being accused of being sexist, they're mm -hmm. being accused of being racist, or even homophobic, mm -hmm. transphobic, whatever it may be, that they simply can't do right for doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain extent where the common sense mm -hmm. we need? Absolutely. And I have to say, I have to add to that, that I do think that um, particularly 
I mean, obviously anywhere in the world, but we live in London. Um, if Jewish people don't feel safe to go into central London on a Saturday, then we have really mucked up very, very badly as a culture. I couldn't agree more. Emma Webb, thank you very much for your time.